Good morning. Rise up in hope today. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Yesterday we talked about suiting up and I hope you had a great day. And I'm wondering how many of us have already put on the full armor of God. I did when I opened my eyes. We talked about the gift of strategy and how God has strategy in his word and he has an armor. And I want to recap and I want to read Ephesians 6.10 as we start out this morning. This morning's devotional is called Soldiers, Athletes, and Farmers. We've been talking about how there is a war. God says it. And there are many wars. And they're in the spiritual and they are in the natural. And if we look around today at the nations... It's very apparent that there is a war at hand. So, Ephesians 6, chapter 10, the armor of God. Finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand, take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert. Always keep on praying for all the saints. So we put on the armor of God. We put on the belt of truth the breastplate of righteousness, the foot gear that we need to spread the good news to a lost and broken world, the shield of faith which breaks discouragement, helmet of salvation which breaks doubt, all those arrows of doubt that want to come at you today, you put on your helmet of salvation and they fall, and the sword of the spirit which is the weapon to be used against Satan's tactics. We are sober and alert this day, God, and we thank you for these things. Now I want us to go to 2 Timothy, a little to the right in your Bible. 2 Timothy. We're going to read chapter 2, 1 through 6. 2 Timothy. This is Paul encouraging Timothy because Timothy is becoming a disciple. And when we do start to walk with Jesus, we need a lot of encouragement. We need a lot, of, a lot of encouragement all the way through. There is water along the way. I love that expression God gave to me several years ago. And he said, you and Joe will have water along the way. I have supplied your need of encouragement. And what a blessing. And what a blessing to every person that has ever sown a seed of encouragement into our lives. And we know them. And God reminds us of them. And we pray for them daily. So 2 Timothy chapter 2, it says, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. So there's a, there's a thread of teaching and discipleship along the way. When we learn something, it's for somebody else. When we learn and we're we are brought through a trial, a hardship, you can be sure that somebody else is going to come into your path that is needing what you have learned because that's how God works. Verse 3, endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I'm saying, says Paul, for the Lord will give you insight to all of this. So this 
devotional today is soldiers, athletes, and farmers. And I think we take on those characteristics at various times in our lives. Some of us right now are soldiers on the front line. And if we think about the military, military service, military people focus on their mission. They don't focus on the unrelated concerns. They avoid distraction. And I want to give us the definition of a distraction because boy, does the enemy have tactics of distraction for us even today. Distraction, the definition, distracts us from mission, from a task that God gives us. So here's our first challenge for today. What is the task, the mission that God has asked you to do for today? You know, the Our Father Prayer says, give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily task. God, what do you have for us today? What is the mission that you have for me today? So that as I seek you, I will find you and Holy Spirit, you will direct me. Once you get with God and you know what your task is, then you ask Holy Spirit, don't let me become distracted. Let me keep the focus. And I love the definition of focus is to pay particular attention to. We must remain focused. We are filled with a world of distractions and we have to be so, you know, we have to have those glasses that they put on horses so that the horses don't hear, don't see what's to the right or to the left of them, that they remain focused. That's what we need, friends. That's what I need. Oh God, keep every distraction away from me. We ask what it is and then we pray that Holy Spirit will give us a tunnel vision mentality for the task at hand, whatever that task is for you. And he will do that because he's faithful. We, I love this. No good soldier gets involved in civilian affairs so often. I use this. This is one of my life scriptures because there are so many distractions. If the enemy can get me off track, he wins. And I'm not here for him to win. So I have learned to study distractions, ask Holy Spirit daily, sometimes hourly. Is that a distraction or is that you? Is that a distraction or is that you? And God is so good because when you begin to dialogue with him and all that means is when you begin to ask him, like a child, ask their parent as they're going through, what's that daddy? What's that mommy? What is that? We have to do the same thing with our creator and that beautiful relationship of personal relationship with God, Jesus and Holy Spirit opens up the dialogue so that you can literally walk through fire and not be touched and not be harmed because of God sending you through the fire. He's sending you with the equipment as his soldier to get through it. So here it says, no one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. I want to give an example because sometimes examples help. Um, let's just say God has asked me to do something. He's asked me to do something and so I'm ready, set, go. And all of a sudden the phone rings with a distraction to take care of somebody or something. Now, I'm not saying every phone call is a distraction, but I've learned to recognize that, first of all, the enemy knows that I'm not gonna just answer any call. He uses the ones that will get to me. He uses the ones that will break my focus completely, and he's not gonna, he's not gonna do it easily. He's gonna do it with something that is going to demand my attention for a moment. And remember, I've shared with you one of my other favorite scriptures is I will have no fear of bad news. Why is that scripture so important to me? It's important to me because the enemy knows that I will look at bad news. I will. I, I, I will take a call. And so I have to be very diligent in asking God, is that call from you? And it, is it important right now? So God monitors the calls that come through my desk because he knows I am a compassionate person, but he also helps me and protects me, guards me against distractions so that if I'm called to do something, God 
wants me to do, I have to remain diligent in it, and maybe I'll even put my phone away. A lot of times I do put my phone away so that I can do what God asked me to do. And that's an example of God's asking you to do something and distractions come in, and they come in in all shapes and sizes. So we want to ask Holy Spirit, is that a distraction or is that something I need to look at right now? And he will show you and guide you the way through. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. We are very aware, aware in America about sports and about how much discipline it takes to be on a professional team of any kind. It takes discipline, and we have to see that discipline and pull it into our walk with Jesus because we really understand that, and we've talked about going to the gym and how much discipline it takes to just get over the humps of the not want to. It's the same way when we are at war walking this life here on earth out. We are going to need to be disciplined, and we've talked about it, and there have been devotionals on discipline, and, and these devotionals are helping me to become more disciplined. I I hope that's the case for you. And then here it also talks about the hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Whatever you do, whatever God has put inside of you, whatever your work is, number one, your work is not your identity. Your identity is in Christ, in your creator. The creator is who we draw our identity from. And why is that so important? That's important because if you are job, if you're, you're the thing that you have placed your identity in falls to the ground or disintegrates or, or you fill in the blank, you haven't lost who you are because who I am is who Christ made me to be. When he called me out to do his work, if my identity was in that performance, I would have been done. I would have not been able to stand. So if you're a teacher and your school closes, rest assured God has another assignment for you because your identity is not in your teaching. If you're a construction builder and you have a company and your company folds, it's not who you are. If you are in the restaurant business, or right now there are so many businesses that are struggling through this pandemic, Rest assured God loves you and he's holding you. And if you have to close your business, God has a far grander, far grander assignment for you. Trust him because that's not who you are. What you do is not who you are. Who you are is who you rest in and who created you. And I hope that speaks to somebody today because we have misplaced our identity in the wrong places. And right now that's being shaken. And God knows it. So go to him because he has your destiny and your purpose. And he loves you. He has given you those gifts. And they're not going to be wasted. They won't be wasted during this lockdown time. They will be, oh, he'll use it to his glory if you let him, friends. And be encouraged. And if you have been thinking that your identity, your purpose is in your company, just go to God and say, man, I just, I just didn't have that right. I, I, messed, I missed the mark there. Can you show me how to realign with you so that I will be able to be carried through to victory in the place that you have me in? So the hardworking farmer, and that symbolizes many things. That just means a hardworking anybody should be the first to receive a share of the crops. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And there's a beautiful story. There was a widow in the Old Testament and uh, a prophet was sent to her. And his first question to her was, what do you have in your hands? And she said, well, actually, I don't have very much right now. I'm at the end. I'm fixing my last meal before I die. <laughs> this was what she thought. But God had the plan and he sent the prophet. And you know what the prophet said? Let me have that meal. You cook for me and then we'll see what happens. And she had food for as long as she needed. Her son became sick and God healed. I mean, there was so much good worked out because you know what? 
She did give him her last meal. Are we given are we giving God what's in our hands? And all he's asking is, trust me, give it to me, and let me work it out. So, soldiers, athletes, farmers, where are you? Are you fitting into any one of those? Are you a soldier in the Lord's army? Because us as believers, we're supposed to be. You know, remember that old song, I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. So we're all soldiers. Where are you? Are you in boot camp? Are you in training? Have you come through some things? Are you a general? There are generals out there that the Lord is speaking to today. Are you an athlete? Do you understand the discipline of athlete, of being an athlete? And if you do, then teach somebody else what it's like to walk with Jesus with an athletic mentality. It will help them. Give what you've been given. And then if you're a farmer and you've been sowing the seeds, we had that beautiful devotional a couple days ago on the gift of the seed. And our job is just to scatter, to disperse in many places the seeds of your hope that lives within you. And so I hope that God, we're going to finish with Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, and again, that's a little to the right in your Bible. Hebrews 12. This is how we're ending this devotional today, friends. Chapter 12, verse 1. Subtitle says, God disciplines his sons. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary or lose heart. No, no time to be weary, just time to be encouraged by other like-minded followers of Jesus. I hope that this encourages you. I'm grateful for everyone that is being encouraged every morning or every afternoon or whenever you're watching these. I'm just, I'm encouraged. God is encouraging me and I want to encourage you that we are runners and there is a joy that's set before us just like it was for Jesus and eternity waits for us. It's full of good things. But while we're here in war, put on your full armor and fight. The victory has already been won. In Jesus' name, amen. See you tomorrow.